guy, 29 male. I'm dating my brothers, 19 male. Ex-girlfriend, 18 female. And now my brother and family wants us to break up. Any suggestions on what? to do break up break up <laughs> obviously break up about four months ago i started dating my girlfriend who used to date my brother our age gap is about 11 years with me turning 30 in april and her turning 19 in may go to f hell which i know some will judge but i don't see the issue with two consenting adults being in a relationship they dated for about two years and i would see her with my brother when i came by to visit my family but i never thought anything of her she was just my brother's girlfriend and at that time i was also oh. in a relationship oh. you were a 27 year old pervert creeping on a 16 year old high school girl that's disgusting at the beginning of last summer i ended things with my ex as i couldn't see things long term with her so I was now a newly single man. In July, I went on a family vacation with my mother, father, my little brother, and his girlfriend came along, which at the time they had both graduated high school by now. She had started conversations with me on the vacation and over time through the trip, we would talk quite frequently which my brother seemed a little upset, but I just thought we were getting to know each other and becoming friends. I remember she had asked how old I was and when I told her I was 29, she was shocked as she thought I was only 19 or 20 when she first met me. I just have that youthful face and skin and take care of my appearance and keep myself in great shape. About a month later, after the vacation, my brother ended up in jail for an assault and she had split up with him because of that. And they also put he had been in other legal trouble before this. Yeah, he's the bad guy. About two weeks after the breakup, she reached out to me to go out as friends and I had decided to agree. At the time, I was seeing other women on Tinder, but I figured this wasn't a date. We went to the movies. We were just talking and watching the movie and talking and she would say that I seem a lot more mature than my younger brother and that I seem to stay out of trouble. Next thing I knew, we had started kissing and over time, our feelings escalated so we became a couple after hooking up a few more times. For months, I decided to not bring her over to my family as I wanted to give my brother time to move on from her. I would tell my family about the women I'm seeing but didn't give much information until I decided to bring her over for New Year's. Brother, there's not enough time. When I brought her over, my father and mother went quiet and they didn't have much to say and I saw my brother visible anger and he walked away and slammed his room door. I tried knocking on his door and heard him yell off, which saddened me as my brother and I always had a good close relationship before this. We left as we didn't feel welcomed. How did you anticipate that going down? Now my family's trying to force me to break up with her. Both my father and mother are saying we need to break up if I want to ever be able to reconcile with my brother. I don't want to ruin my relationship with my brother and my parents. I love them very much, but at the same time, I feel like it's not their choice who I can date and my brother shouldn't get to control who she can date. Any suggestions on what I should do? Break up. To say he's controlling who she's dating is insane when he's like, I don't want her to date my older brother. It's such a reasonable ask of him. I agree. <laughs> You texted the wrong girl, dumbass. My husband and I have been married for 14 years, and I thought we were happy. We had a few philosophical differences, but overall, I thought we were doing well. One day, I noticed that he was keeping his phone really close at hand, which was not normal for him. Pizza texting him at 2 in the morning. <laughs> hey, you up? He was not a morning person at all. His norm was to stumble his way to the coffee pot and take his morning shower, but he was grabbing his phone off the charger and taking it into the bathroom with him every morning. So I got up in the middle of the night and checked his messages while he was asleep. Dozens of texts to a woman and the recent ones referred to being glad that he was seeing her next week. He had told me that he was going on a business trip. Classic. Which wasn't unusual since his job requires that frequently. Although I am not good at face-to-face -face confrontation, I managed to tell him that I had discovered his affair and asked him if he wanted to do marriage counseling to repair our relationship. Oh, that is generous. He then gaslit me and told me that I was imagining things. There was nothing to the text messages he sent to the other woman. It was just flirtation. Which is still cheating. Yeah. You're imagining things, babe. I'm just fucking flirting. Flirt. <laughs> what a crazy response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he didn't want or need counseling. But he said that since I thought our relationship was in trouble, perhaps we should separate for a while. He would take our our big motor home and live in a local RV park while we thought things out. I followed him to the RV park intending to bring him back to his vehicle which was parked at our house. On the way there he texted me directions to where he was going. A few minutes later I get another text
text from him, which said, we are headed to the RV park. She's in a pissy mood, so it will be after five before I can get back to the RV and I can call you. Can't wait to hear your voice. Love you. Love you? Love you is crazy. (laughs) For a moment, I was confused as hell, and then it hit me. So I texted him back. You texted the wrong girl, you dumbass. There was radio silence for several minutes, and then he texted, OMG, wild to start that way. (laughs) OMG, I'm so sorry. I don't want to talk about this. I turned around and texted back. There's nothing to talk about. We're done. Good. What a piece of shit. Story time about how my boyfriend took me back after I cheated. So a little background information. I was 16 and in 11th grade. And my boyfriend Jacob and I had just gotten back together. We've been together for a year. But we were having some issues so we broke up for a little bit. Well, only after a week of him and I being back together... I cheated on him. I started texting this guy and I ended up sending news to him. And he sent them to my boyfriend, of course. Yeah, I know. That's what I get for cheating. I'm a terrible person. Blah, blah, blah. Get over it. Well, when my boyfriend confronted me about it, I told him the truth about it and he broke up with me. And I regretted it so much. A month later, I decided to reach out to him. I was like, hey, that was the worst mistake I've ever made. And I want to try again. Thankfully for me, he took me back. But the first few months of us being back together were miserable. People were starting rumors that I was cheating on him again. It was literal hell. Moral of the story, if you want to get with somebody else, just break up with your partner. So if you want to get back with them, things are a little bit salvageable. My daughter is pregnant. How do I tell her that our older daughter is actually her biological mother? So I, 53 male, and my wife, 53 female, had our older daughter Sarah, 31 female, when we were 22. We were young and broke, but managed, and now we raised Sarah the best we could. She got pregnant at 15. It was a very depressing time for her. She had to go to therapy and never told us anything about the father, which always upset her, so we never pushed the issue. She originally wanted to terminate, but kept canceling and eventually told us she wanted to give her up for adoption. But five months into the pregnancy, when she was discussing with a social worker for a couple to adopt, the couple dropped out of the adoption. After trying to find more couples, Sarah asked us if we wanted to adopt. Rose and I were both 30 at this point and we both had been discussing having another child. So we ended up adopting our daughter Ellie when Sarah had her at 16. Two years after Ellie, me and my wife had our son Logan, 13 biologically. Growing up, we always planned to tell Ellie she was adopted, but we knew with telling her that, we had to tell her Sarah was her bio mother. Sarah never became close with Ellie, not even as her sister. She moved out after the birth and lived with my wife's sister. She has always shown sisterly love to Logan, but never towards Ellie. There has always been conflicting feelings with Sarah. I have seen posts on Sarah's Instagram where she posted a picture of what was supposed to be the five of us, but Ellie was cut out. I confronted her about this and she says it's too painful. However, a couple of years ago, she showed up drunk, begging us to let her see her daughter. We talked to her and let her stay, but did not let her near Ellie since she was drunk. We found out from her husband that she had suffered several miscarriages and was told to consider a surrogate. She ended up doing that four years ago and has since had twins, Jack and Jill, thir- Oh my god. She ended up doing that four years ago and has since had twins, Jack and Jill, three years old, who are biologically hers. Ellie has loved being an aunt to the twins and Sarah has encouraged this with Ellie and has been inviting Ellie over to her house for family time with Logan, who loves being an uncle. We have asked Sarah that in light of the twins and Ellie being close to them, wouldn't it be time to tell Ellie the truth, but Sarah keeps claiming she is not ready. Recently, Ellie came to us and told us that she is pregnant. This time, it is a completely different situation. We have met the father, he is a childhood friend of hers, and they decided they wanted to lose their virginities to each other. Why do I need to know that information? We had the talk with Ellie long ago, as we did with Sarah. We approached the situation calmly and have since met with the father and his parents. Ellie is insistent on keeping the baby. She is three months along. We have not told Sarah yet, and we do not know how to approach the situation. We don't know how she'll be able to take it. My wife and I are considering telling Ellie the truth, but we need Sarah to be there. So he has an update. I'm curious to see where this goes. Well, I decided to just focus on helping out Ellie, who is four months pregnant. We didn't want to stress her out by telling her about the adoption yet. In fact, we know we should have already told her a long time ago, despite Sarah's emotions on the matter. It's not like we even knew the details on Ellie's father, so that would have been Sarah's talk. But we, as Ellie's parents, still should have told her the truth when she was younger. Ellie told family about the pregnancy. She has since told my parents, her boyfriend's grandparents, and then of course, she told Sarah. Sarah didn't react well, but told her she would support her. Of course, Sarah reached out to us after, very upset, but said she was ready to talk to Ellie. First about the adoption with us, and then said that she wanted to tell Ellie about her father alone. We sat down and had the discussion. Ellie was of course upset, but calmed down after a while. 
She, of course, had questions about her father. Sarah had that discussion with her. At the time, I didn't know what was told, and it was none of our business. But Ellie told us she knows who he is and said she didn't want to reach out, so we moved on after that. The other day, I got a call from my sister-in-law, Renee, 31 female, my brother's wife. She was angry and was asking what kind of sick idea was Sarah putting in Ellie's head. She started mentioning stuff about Ellie's adoption, so after I got her to calm down, she told me what happened. She claimed that Ellie had messaged my brother Ethan, 32, and told him about the adoption and wanted to talk to him. This confused me because me and Ethan don't talk much. We were never really close because we are 21 years apart. He was my mother's late child and he always got along with mine and our sister's kids as they were all around the same age. Ellie only saw him on the holidays, so telling him about the details in her life didn't make sense. Oh my god, please don't tell me that... What? This became incestual. Renee explained to me that Ellie claimed that Ethan was her father because that is what Sarah had told her and told him that he was going to be a grandpa. I had to sit down for a while. I called Sarah and we had a long conversation. She told me that yes, it was true that Ethan is Ellie's biological father. Sarah and Ethan were close when we were young and they were only 8 months apart. Sarah says that when they went through puberty, feelings changed and that every time she went to her grandmother's, they would hide away from everyone and have their own time. Sarah was upset talking about this, but told me that he never assaulted her and that it was always consensual. She never wanted to tell me because she was ashamed of the fact that the father of her baby was her uncle. Ew, Gross! I have since talked to Ethan as well. He denied it to Ellie over text, but told me it was true. We exchanged a few words back and forth. Even if this was consensual, how could he sleep with his own niece? He had all of these reasons, but I wasn't hearing it. He knew of the pregnancy and being Ellie's father the whole time, and he never even bothered to step up to say anything. I have talked to Ellie about it. She says she was upset when she found out, but she always thought she looked like my stepdad's side of the family. It upset me when she mentioned that because honestly, I see it. It's pretty obvious now. I knew that Ellie favored whoever her father was because she didn't look like anyone on our side. But I never suspected Ethan. My mother and stepdad have found out and Ethan told Renee it was true. She has left with their kids to stay with her family. Ethan has tried to reach out to Ellie now, but I don't want her speaking to him. I'm still her father and I don't think she is safe being in touch with him. Ellie has shown no interest in talking. I asked her why she reached out to him before talking to Sarah or us about it and she said that she just wanted to know his side of the story but feels betrayed for being lied to. Holy moly! Okay, let me explain it to you so people get confused, okay? There's mom and dad. They have a daughter. That daughter sleeps with her dad's half-brother. But it's still her uncle, okay? Is this the dad's half-brother? So this is like, it's still a half-uncle? I don't know. Whatever. It's still incestual, okay? My daughter's friend stole a $5,000 watch from my husband, and we don't know how to tell her parents. Our daughter, 18 female, has been friends with this girl for about 8 or 9 months and in the last few months, she started inviting her over to our house more often because they are classmates and sometimes they have projects to do together. Well, last week she came to our house and my husband, 56 male, was helping them with a project. Since they are studying the same thing he studied and at one point my youngest daughter came home with her friends so my eldest daughter and her friend went to my husband's office. And according to him, he had taken off his watch and left it on the desk and our daughter saw him, so he was right. But when her friend left, the watch was gone. And after searching for it throughout the house, I, 36 female, decided to check the security cameras and she took it when she was left alone in the office for less than 5 seconds. Oh my god, you guys have a 20 year age gap? And your daughter's 18? Oh my god, wait, well, we'll do the math. <gasps> you were, what the fudge? You were 18 when he was, when your daughter was born? And your husband was 38? We got bigger problems here, sis. 38 and 18 is grooming. To my surprise, my daughter wasn't surprised because according to her, this is the third time that valuable things have disappeared from our house. The first two times, she stole a pair of gold earrings and a gold necklace from my daughter, and she thought she lost them because honestly, she loses her things all the time. But my daughter is sure that her necklace and earrings were in her jewelry box and that her friend took them. And now my husband and I don't know if we should tell her parents since she has stolen a significant sum of money from our house, and the last thing we want is to get the police involved. We just want our stuff back and help her get help because she clearly has a problem. How can you talk to parents about this without them feeling offended? In total, she stole almost $6,000 from her house, and that's not right. But she's young, and we want to give her another chance. That's why we're not going to involve the police, and that's why we also want to talk to her parents. What would be the correct way to face this situation? So, she has an update. My husband and I decided to talk to her parents, because she lives with them, and we thought telling them was the best thing. 
Well, according to them, they suspected that she was doing something wrong because she was receiving more and more gifts from my daughter every day because that's what she said they were. We told them that our daughter only gave her a bracelet and that was a birthday gift, but the rest of the things were never gifted. Unfortunately, they weren't offended and even promised to check her room to see if they could find our things. When they checked her room and her electronics, they found even more things than we thought. She has been stealing things from my house for months to sell them online on a secondhand clothing sales app. At home, we live with four teenagers, 18, 16, 14, and 12, who are constantly exchanging clothes, shoes, and jewelry, and often have arguments because one of them takes something from the other without permission. So when she stole several of my daughter's clothes, they never suspected it was her. She sold all of the clothes she stole from them and only had my daughter's earrings and necklace, a ring from my youngest daughter, and my husband's watch in her house. According to her, she did that because she wanted to help her father with some debt that he has because she didn't want to have to sacrifice college to reduce expenses. She works as a nanny and sometimes that money wasn't enough to help her family and she noticed that since my daughter wasn't affected by losing jewelry, so she thought about taking them because she needed them more. Her parents confirmed that they have a debt but they would never have thought she would do something like this to help. They apologized and promised to return every penny of the things that were already sold but my husband told them that it was not necessary that her giving us back the jewelry and the watch was enough. She gave us everything back and also apologized. And we told her that this time we were not going to involve the police, but that not everyone would do the same if they caught her stealing again. We also made it clear that she is no longer welcome in our home and that my daughter will finish the project for both of them because we don't want her to be involved with her either. And that is it. And we haven't heard from her since.